Hey guys, first I want to welcome all the new people to my channel. And I want to say that I got my um, coffee, I'm a little more awake, and I wanted to answer some of the questions that I've been getting. And I appreciate it so much because some of the OGs to my channel, I guess you could say, came here because I started off talking about narcissistic abuse. And I've kind of since kind of gotten away from that, not intentionally. Um, it's just because I've I'm, I'm I've healed for the most part. I'd say 95, 96, 7 percent all healed from that. And so I wanted to come on here and just do an update on all of that. And I'm I've got my Johnny Depp mug. Um, my coffee this morning because there's a lot of comparisons that I'm going to make and and I'm I'm doing that because you will understand it better having seen the trial between him and AH and I for one am so appreciative that he that he um brought that trial out to the world because it brought narcissism into the light where it wasn't really talked about very much. And since then, it now it's talked about more than ever because of Johnny Depp. And I am so appreciative of it. So we're going to get into this video today. Um, first, I want to apologize for um, taking so very long to finish the the workbook that I submit that I well I'm still working on for you but admittedly so I had kind of put it to the side for a bit just because I've been living my life which is a very good thing and um I'm going to get back to completing that for you and we'll get back to working on those steps to healing from narcissistic abuse um let me get a sip of my coffee as close as Johnny Depp will ever be to my lips. <laughs> mm. Anyway. Okay, so how am I doing? Like I said, I'm about, I'd say 97% um, healed. Get my shirt even here. Um, I would say... The biggest scar that I have been left with, and this is why I can understand where Johnny Depp is in, in his healing process, and why I do believe um, he's single and just interested in <clears throat> doing his own thing. It's because he and I are in the same and everyone heals at their own pace, granted. But he and I are in the same kind of time frame. Um, my relationship ended in 2016 um, from my narcissist. And it started in 2014. So, oddly enough, he and I <clears throat> are, like I said, in the same time frame. So, I get where he is. And so, when I talk about his healing... It's not because I know him. It's because I I know and understand where he's likely at in that time frame. Um, so, as I said, mine ended in 2016. And I don't need to go back and, and talk about what happened because there's enough videos that I've done talking about what happened. And that is not helpful to my healing. So where I am now um, is just as far as my healing goes, I'm living my life. I'm I am happy, you know, all of the the anger, the sadness, and that stuff is gone. The delusion that's gone. But the thing that sticks with me is that I am extremely gun shy when it comes to relationships. I have been in several relationships since the narcissist, but none of them lasted very long. I ended all of them because 
I just was not ready. And I recognize that I am not ready. I may never be ready again. It does something to you. Um, <clears throat> one thing that it does to you <clears throat> is it makes you distrust people. It makes you distrust them, their motives. Um, it makes you just kind of wonder if everybody's lying to you, <clears throat> especially the opposite sex, excuse me. And what are their real reasons for wanting to be with you? And it also really makes you take account to your self-worth. Um, it made me look at what I thought of myself. How could I allow myself to be taken in like that? Um, now, I want to say also that the narcissist is just extremely, extremely good at playing that game. So it's not, it's not that you just, or that I, or that Johnny just didn't see it. It's that they're just very very good at that game and I mean super good like Academy Award winning good <laughs> and they take you into their fantasy world and you you think it's all real and none of it is real none of it. it's like waking up from a bad dream while you're in it you think you're having a great dream but even when you're in it, you know, there is part of you, there is part of you that is like, something's not right here. Something just isn't right. But you can't figure it out. Don't know if that skylight's bothering you or not. Um, but what it leaves you with once you're out of it, once you've gotten through that, that part of realizing it wasn't real and you're moving on with your life, you, you come to love yourself. Once you remember who you are and, and once you're, you've gotten them out of your system and you remember who you are, you love yourself again. You really do. And you want to do things for yourself. You remember all the things that you enjoy doing, not just the thing you did because they wanted to do it. You realize how much you love your own time and doing things on your own time frame. And not answering to anybody, you know. I don't sit around waiting for my phone to ring. I don't wait to receive a text from anybody. You know, I don't cry over anybody. Oh, God, that's the biggest one. I'm not crying over wondering if so-and-so is going to call me. Why, why aren't they speaking to me? Why am I, you know, why did they break up with me? I'm not going through any of that because I'm not putting myself into that kind of position. So there's that. You really enjoy, you, you love your own company again. You love yourself and you love going out and doing things for yourself, with yourself. You can have friends without them being questioned. You can come in late without, you know, somebody's going to get upset with you, whatever. And you can have your own interest again, which you may have forgotten what that was. Um, because of the narcissist, because all of your interests became their interest. Because at first they pretended to be interested in the things you were interested in. And then slowly that stuff got twisted and turned around. So you get to do all, all of the, and you can even hear it in my voice. I hear the excitement in my voice when I think about doing things for myself. And I started my daycare after the narcissist left and I through that I got very busy and that really helped throwing yourself into your work really helps with your healing and Johnny Depp has done that you know he's thrown himself into his music and his directing and his acting and and I know that has helped with his healing <clears throat> and so now I can say the only lasting bit that I'm still struggling with and probably will always struggle with is I just want to remain 
single at this point. I don't have any interest in um in in becoming anybody's anything. You know, I'm just I have friends. I have, you know, but my my friends are like like I can count them on one hand, my close friends. Um I have people that I trust. Um and and that is even smaller. You, you keep your circle very tight. Um, and, um, but as far as romantically speaking, my Sandy girl wants to play now. <laughs> as far as romantically speaking, I'm not looking. And I don't see anything on the horizon, you know, for that. That was not a Johnny Depp pun. Um. I don't see anything on the horizon for me romantically because I'm not looking and I'm, but so, so if there's anything, any issue that I've been left with, and this is why I can understand and believe when I read that Johnny is single and isn't looking is because I am where he is time timeline. And yes, everyone heals in their own time. But narcissistic abuse is different. It's a whole different um, entity in itself. And so I do not, cannot see myself in a relation, a romantic relationship with anyone. And I have totally kept me to me in every sense of the word because I don't I don't want to give myself away to anybody because I don't trust that they are going to be as careful with me as I am does that make sense so and I don't really see that as a bad thing um, because it has given me time to get to know myself better and to understand the things that I like to do and I'm just fine being single I'm enjoying it and so that's why when you see me reading these articles about Johnny Depp and and you know talking about how I totally believe that he is just doing him it's because we are on the same timeline so I understand it's not that because I know him or anything or even close to it or whatever it's just because I understand we're on the same timeline I understand where he is in this process because that's where I am as well and this is actually a good place to be you know, some people might look at it and be like, yeah, but you're by yourself. But no, I'm not. I've got family. I've got my dogs. I've got me, you know, and I have, like I said, a few good friends that I can count on, that I adore, that I trust. Um, and I'm not really looking to, to widen that. And I'm not looking to date anyone. Um, because then that's going to open myself up to can I trust them? And honestly, after being abused by a narcissist, you're kind of just emotionally spent in that area. So you just don't want to open yourself up to it again. So that's where I am. And folks, I will finish that workbook for you. For those of you who are interested in, in getting it, um, I will finish that up. I will finish up the steps to uh, being free from the narcissist um, but the best advice I can give you is work on you just work on you pour into yourself you deserve it you deserve all the happiness that, that life holds there's, there's ugly in this world but there's also so much beauty and so much fun and, and so much to enjoy before it's over all too soon so do that and just put the rest of it behind you and just go and enjoy 
yourself. God bless. And thank you guys for asking how I was, how I'm doing. Thank you. And thank you for being here. You all mean <clears throat> a great deal to me. You just mean the world to me. Bye now. God bless.